Today, we are joined by the beautiful, she's beautiful, she's gorgeous, obviously. She's a Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, and actress, and with a new album out, a hit single, Blowing Up the Charts, an upcoming tour, and oh, did I mention a wedding on the horizon. This girl is booked and busy. I'm so happy to be with her today. Corinne Hartharn, welcome to EXO Nicole. Yes. yes, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. Listen, I just want to be in your presence because look at God, okay? Girl, look at him, okay? Make it away. He's going to do it. Period, period, period. Again, Corinne, welcome to EXO Nicole. I'm so excited to talk to you. We have a lot to dive into today, so like, let's get right into it. How are you? Girl, I am good. I'm currently taking some time at home. My little dog, but she's not little. She's huge. She's literally sitting right next to me right now. She's so spoiled. Can but we like, get a cameo is... from her? Girl, come here, Prophet. Come see. Let's see. If she she typically on. likes to hop up. Can y'all see her? her yeah, little... we can see. We can Look see. Look at my little baby. She's baby. <laughs> <laughs> I said little baby she is big look at her she's a big teenage thug. honey <laughs> girl she is look at her big thug little, my... and but a baby though she I see her like over cuddling I cannot I cannot girl, and she's still a puppy she's four months but she's huge she's gonna be a monster but we're teaching her in love I'll be praying over her okay yes. I need a pointed monster okay <laughs> <laughs> but I... everything is good I love it. I love that you're a dog mom. Fun fact, though, I also love um, you're a foodie. Um, I was on your Instagram last night because I'm trying to get in my cooking bag, Corinne. Like, listen, yeah, I'm, a wife, and I'm trying to get in the, you know, like cooking. I've been doing a little bit of something, but you be cooking and you're even the owner of the cobbler house, which, honey, if y'all haven't been on the Cobbler's House page, y'all need to go check it out because, baby, the Cobbler is cobbling, okay? Yeah. It looks so good. What inspired you to even want to, like, create a restaurant centered around Peach Cobbler? You know what? Um, I'm from Louisiana, so like you said, I'm just a really big foodie, like, all together. I've always loved cooking ever since I was a little girl. My mm -hmm. mom used to have, like, this little red cookbook. And she really only got it for decoration. Now that I'm grown, I understand that it was just decoration right. in the kitchen. But sweetie, I was in there and I would just pick certain recipes out of there to try. My mama would be so mad at me because the kitchen would be dirty. But I've just always loved cooking. I've always loved food ever since I was a kid. So um, I don't really feel like it's just far from like my nature now to see just like how well, if I must say my so myself, that I actually do in the kitchen. Right. And, um, you know, I'm also just like an entrepreneur. So always thinking of new ideas and um, the cobbler house was just an idea that came about because I have so many great recipes for cobbler that I got from my aunties and my grandmas and some of my own. Um, right. So I thought that it just would have been great to kind of like do a little venture out in the food business. Um, so I did that and loved it. We currently aren't operating anywhere right now because girl, let me tell you something. Being an entrepreneur and trying to be a girl with Grammy noms is hard out here in these streets. Your hooks and blast hand, your, your hands are in everything, Corinne. With everything. So yes. I'm real serious about my business. I take it very, very personal. And the fact that I wasn't able to like be there super hands-on, I was like, we need a break. And I need time to build a sufficient team to run it how I know that I'm going to run it. So I kind of got my feet wet in it. And mm -hmm. um, it did incredible. And I'm like, the best thing to do is just pause right now. So I'm excited to see like, what's on the horizon and even expanding because it was just a dessert shop. But like, I want to do so much more than just that. Like, I got the real recipes, girl. Girl, so, share those recipes, Corinne. Sharon, I got you trying to get in the kitchen, girl. I just made some jambalaya. Stop it. I was like, hey, my husband's from New Orleans. So I was like looking, I was no. like, wait a minute. Excuse me, ma'am. You know the Baby, the pot is gone. It's gone. There's no more jambalaya left. I know. Oh, no leftovers. Oh, I already know. I already know. Um, I love that. That's what I love about you is that you're just, your spirit and everything that you touch, I feel like it always wins or it always works because of what you give it. You give 110 to everything you do. So that's not surprising you. that you take the food and expand, but expand those recipes and share. Okay. For sure. Um, yes. <laughs> okay. So now we were first introduced to you when you were a finalist on season eight of NBC's The Voice. 
you placed fourth place um, on Pharrell Williams' team. And after finishing fourth place, you signed your first record deal. How did that experience prepare you like for what was to come? Girl, God's orchestration, because I'm not going to lie. I like look back and I was only 16 when I was on that show. So just kind of like seeing even before that, lots of people, they might not know. I did competitions from the age of seven until I went on The Voice. So I spent like a bulk of my childhood, like competing and singing competitions. So I think for me, when I got on The Voice, I was fully prepared for that at 16 because of the things that I had been doing before, just in the state of Louisiana. And then being on The Voice really just prepared me for like the music industry as a whole. Um, so Pharrell is literally one of the nicest and most greatest human beings I've ever met in my life. He wow. is incredible. I had the best experience on his team um, and the show and just from the, the workers, even behind the scenes, like NBC, The Voice, they have a great team over there. So um, if anybody want to go try out y'all work. NBC, I recommend The Voice. They are incredible. Um, but it it just literally prepared me for everything that I'm doing now. I think that like my biggest thing was that I've always was able to just express myself in ways that like expanded outside of the walls of like just gospel. Like mm -hmm. when I was on The Voice, I sang many different genres from pop to rock to R and B. And I think the beautiful thing about that was that I never had to say out of my mouth like. I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, people just knew. Um, so I think that a big thing about that like taught me because I never thought that I could do gospel music when I left from The Voice was like, okay, I allow God to orchestrate my path and just to see what he's done with my career, like somebody who never felt like they sounded like a traditional gospel artist, but just the calling and the purpose and the anointing that he had over my life to do what I was supposed to do, it didn't matter, you know, what it sounded like. People were still going to know. So the voice has done a lot for me and it's still teaching me now that I'm like, you know, ready to expand even further where I'm just like, you know what? God is going to be with me and people are going to know what I stand for regardless of if it doesn't look like what it typically is supposed to look like. So the voice is still teaching me to this day. It, it's been an amazing experience. Absolutely. Do you keep in touch with Pharrell? Like, does he haven't spoken to him in a little while I need to reach out we need to get in the studio if we're being honest I think it's long overdue yes for, for the Corinne Pharrell collab so maybe on the next project we might get that even on the fashion side too like want to see you, you know what I all day but girl yeah period yeah. okay um now Corinne you recently dropped a brand new album I'm entitled On God featuring my favorite song. Listen, it stays a repeat. Okay, girl, my heart. I was listening to it this morning. Look at God. Um, I love that song. I just love all of your music, period. But we're going to talk about Look at God really quick. How did you land on that title? And why did you say, okay, this is going to be the first single that I'm going to drop from the album? You know what? I was filming a movie, um, Praise This. And mm -hmm. while I was on set, one of the amazing gospel legends, Charles Jenkins, he was there because he had his dealings in the movie as well. And he was like, Corinne, there's this song that I heard, like, it's not finished. It's an idea, but I think it would be great for you. Um, So when I heard it, I literally was like, okay, yeah, this certain songs, like, you know, I don't write every single song. I'm not mad at that if I hear it and it still feels like it's me. Right. So Won't He Do It was that because I didn't write Won't He Do It um unstoppable was another one that was written for me so I feel like God like kind of gives people these like little nuggets for right. me sometimes and like just having an ear to hear it and be like yep that's my message I know that I'm supposed to help sing this but luckily I was able to go in because the song wasn't complete to still write on this record as well and kind of give my heart to the message mm -hmm. and I think that God for us was sincerely just about thinking of the things that God has done in our lives and how we're like oh, we're so grateful for those things, but then we forget because those trials come back up again. So when we wrote this record, it just was like giving God the glory and the honor for the things that he's done, but also just a hopeful and prophetic message that like, no, he is going to do those things again. All of the areas in my life that might be slacking or that I might have given up on, he can show up for me in the same way that he's done time and time and time again. So I think that like when we finally finished writing and we heard it back, Everybody in the room was just like, 
Like we were like y'all. Like it was just like, yeah, this is that it just did something to you. And I think that it has that urban feel, but it's something that's still just so like anointed and spiritual about it. Like I listen to that guy sometimes and still get super emotional just like hearing it. So I don't know. I knew like that it was really special. And I felt like because the album, this was before the album came out, it was so out of the box and eclectic because for some people on God is a, a R&B album, you know, right. that it's for R&B heavy and it definitely is. And it has a lot of those feels that I just personally felt like look at God was the appropriate song to kind of lead out with just to give people like they needed to hear the message before we transitioned over into the things that might have felt like super out of the box that this just felt like Corinne, you know, and it felt like a message that people needed to hear in this time. And I'm happy that I did because they didn't want me to drop that one first, girl. They were Are fighting. You They're, girl, yes. But you know, the business people always wrong. And I get to sit here with a lovely pride and say, I told you so. Told so, you so. Fought hard for that one. I really believe that God had something for this record. So I'm, I'm grateful to see everything that it's even done on social media. To see like people continue to use it underneath their stories on TikTok and on their reels. And people posting it with their pictures. Look at God is doing something amazing. And I feel like this is just the beginning of what this song is going to do. So, yeah. Girl, the song is doing it. Okay. <laughs> Listen. Also, cut them off. I like that your songs, it, even though you say you don't write on all of them, I like that you obviously have to say, okay, this is something I want to do. You're not going to put your name on anything. Right. I like that the songs have messages that are relatable to, I feel like every demographic, no matter your age, but who would you say your target audience is? Because you have like, won't he do it, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously the Billboard hot charts song that blew up the world. Like, won't he do it? That's an anthem for all of us but who would you say your target audience is who is your music for girl I don't know everybody like it's literally what you said I think that for me if I'm going into it I think that what's important I'm not even going to say the music I think that the message and the example that I'm giving is targeted for my generation and for young people to be able to look and feel relatability to somebody that's trying to live a certain way um, but I think that when the music comes out, the people that it impacts is so much more than just them. So I think that I do make music. I try to, like you said, even if it's something that I didn't write, when it comes to the album, I came up with the concept for every single song on the album. And um, the songs that I, even from like before, when, before I started writing, when I was a kid and I would just perform, what was always per important to me was to pick songs that I personally felt that I had an emotional our physical connection too. So I think that like with my music, that's really important for it to be super relatable and to make songs that are gonna touch and inspire people in some type of way, shape or form. So I hope that it continues to be for everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what my target audience is, but I hope that it can be for everybody. And I say that because I'm gonna segue into, somebody just dropped a country album and her name is what? Beyonce, <laughs> right? Beyonce. I mean, she shook it up, right? She shook up the world. She got us broke the internet again, you know, Miss Break the Internet. But um, I feel like with her dropping that album, you now can't like label her a specific in a specific genre, right? Right. And I want to know for you, do you feel like your music resonates? or it transcends genres? Like, do you feel like your music is not only gospel, but it's also R&B, it's also whatever it is that yeah. whoever's listening to it? Well, you know, it goes back to me talking about like just things that I've learned from the voice. And I feel like God is a very, he's so like, I don't know, like purposeful in his ways. And I've always prayed, like my mom used to pray over me when I was a kid for God to orchestrate my path. And I learned mm -hmm. to pray the Thing. So I feel like just looking back at like the voice and seeing like, okay, I see why you did what you did there because I was never meant to be put inside of a box. And I think that the most important thing for me is like, I, I, I love Jesus. Like, I know that I have a purpose and that my purpose is to lead people to him at the end of the day. I don't think that that has to be specifically set in a genre of saying gospel music. I think that you can lead people to Christ and spread the gospel in the R&B genre as well. Um, so I think for me, like, I'm super excited about the future because I would love to just do more outside of the gospel space. I would love to make more 
R&B heavy songs. I would love to make pop songs. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, the core of my heart is always going to be to inspire people, you know, and to just make songs that would ultimately lead people to him because that's what life is about. It just might not look like what people are used to it looking like. But at the end of the day, the story is what's important. So shout out to Beyonce because I actually love the country album. I think she did an amazing job. I think that she is breaking down boundaries in her way of like showing that like, you know, I feel like that genre thing goes across the board. It's right. it's it can be with race, it can be with religion. And, and I just think that um all together of like maybe their message is like music is what brings us all together. And I'm just like for me it's like, well God brings us all together. And we can do that in any way, shape or form, in any walk of life, whatever the race, whatever genre, whatever mm -hmm. upbringing he still loves us and he has the plan for us. So I can see the similarities in that way. And I'm excited. I might drop a country album. You never know. What career you never know. For? We wait for it. I got my cowboy hat. Uh, listen. I'm going to have to wait a little while. B just killed it. We got to wait. We have to wait. B has killed it. Corinne, why do you think people get so bent out of shape about gospel artists if they collaborate with the, like, secular, you know, Girl, Why they see the comment and they're like, wait, is she going R and B? Is she going pop? Wait, she and it's like, why you do know you, what? Like the you have coworkers that are Christians? What if your coworker is an atheist? Like, would you literally be like, I'm not going to do this project with this person because they're an atheist or because they're a Buddhist or because they're this? Like, would you not? You know what I'm saying? Sit next to like I just feel like that's it's weird. Like you still should be able to operate and move with people regardless of. And this is crazy because I'm saying something that's deeper. Mm -hmm. You will go to work and still do a project with somebody that's an atheist. Most right. of the time, these people are actually believers. Right. They're just not in the same genre as you. They might not have it all together like you. They might not be on the same level that you are in your relationship with God. But these people are still ultimately believers. So I just feel like they don't see the bigger picture. I think it's very religious standards. I think it's, um, I don't, I don't agree with that. I think that people should work with who they feel uh, connected to. You know, you just never know the conversations that go on beside the songs are what you hear like I know that for me um I had a moment on social media where after the premiere of Praise This the movie that I did with amazing talented people across the board Ja'Kalen was in the movie but so was Chloe Bailey and Drewski and they're all my really close friends and there was a clip of us at the party the after party celebrating the movie coming on me and Chloe were dancing mm -hmm. and the comments that I got from that video of just being like wow you should not be celebrating with people or why are y'all listening to that music and because it was a Cardi B song that was playing in the background and they tried to eat me up. And literally the next day I met Cardi in the studio, like on the most God thing ever, because it wasn't even planned, but being able to have like a conversation with her just about like how she feels and about how her beliefs and being able to be a light to her in that moment. It's just like, okay, what if she saw the things that y'all were saying? Like, right. would that make her more receptive or a little bit more reserved? Like, so I just think that people need to be more wise. You know, it's about winning souls at the end of the day. I don't know why they're so hard up. You know, Jesus sat at the table with sinners. He communed with them. And I think that it's important for us to just, I don't know, just have relationships with people in general. That's important. So they need to stop. Oh, stop. Stop it right now. Because we want a Cardi and Corinne album. See, look. We see this. We are. This girl, girl, I love her down. K and C, K and C. But baby, period. we need a Corinne and Cardi album, like, period. Okay? Yeah. That would be a bop. That it would, would be a vibe. Not going to lie. It would be incredible. Um, Speaking of Cardi and Chloe and all of the Beyonce, do you have somebody that you would like to collaborate with? Like, is there like a dream team or dream artist that you would want to collab with? You know what? Like the other day I was like, oh, when I get this question, because every single time it comes to me, I'm like stumped. But it was somebody I thought about the other day that I literally was like, oh, this is somebody that I would like to collab with. But you know what I've said? It's not like an artist, but like The Dream, who's an amazing songwriter and has wrote hits across the board for everybody, including Beyonce. I really would like to do a song with him. And that would be like a top top. Like if I can work with The Dream, I think that would be amazing. So, yeah. But like, you know, like if Beyonce is hitting around the genres and she decides to do her a little nice little gospel album, Beyonce girl, 
You go anywhere else besides right here, we're gonna have some props. Church girl 2.0. I mean, <laughs> all right, so yeah. Listen, listen, I love that. Corinne, what do you feel like sets your music and your sound apart from other artists in in music period? What do you feel like sets your sound apart? You know what? I don't know. I just be myself. I talk about real life experiences. And I think that everybody tries to do that in some way, shape or form. The difference is this is my life, you know, and nobody else has lived what I've lived. They can relate to it, but they haven't seen it the way that I've seen it. And also just the way that God works in my life and being able to, I guess, like portray that in my music in a way that maybe other people can't because he's gifted me to do that, you know? So my purpose is what makes me different. And the things that God has literally given me, like, I know that this is why he has me here. So, oh, yeah, I love that for for me, that he did that for me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, God. What's, like, what's your go-to song if you're feeling like, you know, okay, God, I'm believing you for something. I'm, you know, really trusting you to move in my life in this season. What's your go-to song to, like, motivate you and be inspired to trust God? You know what? Uh, I'm going to say look at God, obviously, at the top right now. I just sing that one because I always say I have a funny way of, like, prophesying things over my life whenever I make it into a song. So I'm like, so I keep on saying I can't wait for my look at God season. It's approaching. It's approaching. But that one, and I I'm obviously really love math. Um, I think Firm Foundation is a really good one for me. Like, if I'm in a more worshipy mood, then I'm putting on that Firm Foundation. He won't fail because he won't. Um, and then, you know, if you want to feel super original, it won't do it because... Girl, don't even go... Listen, that's the anthem, okay? I mean, that's... Forever. It's forever going to be the things. But yeah, top forever. three. Um, if you weren't pursuing music, a music career, obviously we know you love, you're in your food bag, but what, what, what else would you be doing? What else would Corinne be doing besides buying land, honey? Listen. You know what? This has been a question that's just been going around within my personal circle. Me and my fiance was talking about this because he is currently in law school and I'm like, I would be a lawyer. Like, cause I know that I would make a great judge. Ooh. Like judge Hawthorne. Are you serious? It six, months. So. six months babe I'm giving <laughs> you six months I, I really would have definitely pursued law like I know that I would have been a great lawyer not gonna lie I'd be fighting my little battles in this industry without the degree child and you know I just know that it would give what it needed to gain so I would have been an attorney babe for sure my <laughs> own firm doing all the things all the things and then I would have been a judge I'd have to round it up with being a judge. You know what? I might have made it on the Supreme Court. You never know. So you better TV show to match. Okay. You know, I needed the show. And this is really funny because they're like, you really could have definitely had a judge show. Like you could have been doing it. And I'd have been like, you did what? Right. Girl, that was good. hilarious. Baby, the ratings would be NBC. It would be through look. the roof, girl. I'm not lying. Like, that's crazy. And I'm like, I they had me thinking about really going to school on some stuff just to say I did it, but yeah. Wow. I don't know. I might not have time for all of that, but yep. Yeah, because you are booked and blessed. But I mean, it's never too late. It's never too yep. late. Um, Corinne, you just said something though that struck me. Um, because you said how you have to navigate in this business. How important has it been for you to advocate for yourself in these rooms and spaces where nobody looks like you, or you're feeling like like they told you, look at God shouldn't be the number, shouldn't be the the single to come out first, and you said no. Girl. How navigate those spaces in those rooms that's just like I feel like the confidence that God had to put on the inside of me like what's crazy is if you were to meet my mom she's like complete opposite of me like soft spoken doesn't really want attention doesn't speak up like and I came out just completely opposite she's like who is this child so I just feel like God just put those things in me because he knew that I was going to need to have a certain confidence. And what's important about me is that, like, if I really believe in something, I'm not going to take no for an answer. Like, I feel like other than that, I can be persuaded. I love to hear other people's, like, comments. I love to get other people's opinions. Um, But if it's something that I feel really passionate about, it is what it is. And I'm going to stand firm on that. So I think that that's what has helped me because it took a while for me to be confident in the things that I was doing just from starting so young, being a, whenever you speak out, they are going to be quick to call you a diva. They're going to say that you're difficult. You know, they want to throw these little words around. Mm -hmm. And 
I know that scares, like that's really scary because you don't want that label on yourself. Um, right. So just uh, not to keep bringing her up, but I've always admired Beyonce for being on top of her business and just always being strong enough to stand up for herself and being a woman that's in rooms that's dictating how things are going. And I think that it took me a little while to feel confident enough to, you know, like just as a woman to say like, no, I know what I'm talking about. Because people will try to make you feel stupid they want to make you feel like you don't have enough experience like you're not qualified enough and it'll this will preach for some people but when god has placed something on the inside of you he has given you the divine wisdom and purpose for something it won't be nothing that nobody can disqualify you for what you're saying and what you believe in what you're supposed to be doing so that's that god put it on the inside of you so i feel like it's just him like i really got to give it back to him because I might not have it all the time. I still deal with insecurities and struggles and things that I'm feeling a little bit like unsure about, but he'll give me that tug. And like, it won't let me go if it's something that I need to be confident about. Look at God was one of those things where I was like, y'all are wrong. Right. And I, I'm right. talking about, and you're going to see. And they were like, all right. Like, you know, whenever people are like, yeah, like, yeah, all right. Right. here we are. Okay. So, yeah. Let the numbers speak for themselves. Okay. Let the numbers speak for themselves. You know, we're super grateful. We're like top five on Billboard, like for hot gospel songs on on uh, digital sales, like all the things. We're we're gonna get to the number one spot, but it's it's just incredible to even be top five. It's top five songs, gospel songs in the world. So, yeah, you know, we're in no small feat. No, that's not. That's like no <laughs> twice, big deal. girl. Like no work, you know. <laughs> Billboard, no big deal. No big deal. No big deal, guys. No. <laughs> Girl, listen, okay. Corinne, you can also add preacher, you know, to your roster of things. I can see you having a church, honey, because maybe you can. I mean, I've thought about that too, you know, but not right now. Okay, not right now. Okay, so like you are all the things, but you not only sing, you also have a blossoming acting career. Girl, I loved you in praises. Thank okay? you. Thank you. Talk to us about working on that project because do you feel like the acting comes natural for you? You know what? It's something that's a little bit, um, I think this is the confidence part that's challenging for me because it's not something like, I, I have friends that are like real actors, like Lauren Lott, who is incredible and doing crazy things on TikTok, but she's also an amazing actress. And she was also in that movie as well. And they have been acting since they were kids. You know, they went to actual school for it. So I think like seeing other people's experience compared to mine, I'm like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing for real. But right. I think that something that does come really natural. I would love, love, love. I think I'm like more so into comedies than anything because I'd be making people laugh or whatever, I guess. I'm you kind are of funny. funny. You are I'm, funny. Just a little bit. So I'm really excited to see because I feel like that part comes super natural to me. But like I also want to do, you know, dramas and maybe a little a little thriller. You know what I'm saying? Oh. You know, a little thriller, a little crime, a little something. Um, and those things I have a, an amazing acting coach who I've been working with. Um, so just kind of trying to get myself more confident. If it's something that I'm not sure about, I'm gonna work on it to make sure that it's great. So I'm in my little season of just like prepping to make sure that I'm fully prepared and I'll be auditioning out here in these streets. So hopefully we get a nice little movie or a TV show soon. I'm excited about that. That's like a new path for me. It's like a fresh, I've been singing since I was seven. So like mm -hmm. stepping into acting is something that keeps me on my heels and keeps me motivated. So yeah. I love it. If you had to choose between the two, singing or acting, which one would you choose? Girl, I, why would you ask? I don't know. I haven't really, you know, I can't fairly judge that yet. I know there are so many people that started off in like music and switched over to being full blown actors, babe. So there's something about it, but I don't know. I feel like with singing, I have a little bit more uh, freedom. I'm myself when I sing, you know, that's who I am. I get to sing the songs that mean something to me. I get to, when I do shows, I get to talk and tell my story, acting, you're playing somebody else. Right. right. But it's, but you never know, girl, what if I stop singing and I just become an actor? Wouldn't that be so sad that would not be so sad honey we okay well, hey anything. we want to see you in all the things who would we you want all the things who would you want to what's who's your like your favorite actor and you would love to like work alongside them or just on a project with them oh angela bassey girl. girl i knew you were gonna say that everybody all you and my mama <laughs> baby everybody says angela. everybody trying to work with angela bassey girl i'm trying to work with her she needs to be everybody. my mama somebody's movie or somebody's show like 
here. We're gonna speak it into existence in Jesus' name. I can't wait for the movie. Call me guys when they're all ready. Gonna manifest that, and I'll be interviewing you for that as well. Very okay. Period. Yeah. Um. Okay. So now, Corinne, you got engaged last year, which was so cute. I Thanks. absolutely love that. To your longtime friend turned boyfriend, now fiance. Congratulations. How Thank you. You want to know what's so crazy? He was never my boyfriend. We always laugh at that. It just went from that. Y'all better tell a man. Because you don't gotta be no girlfriend, man. Y'all don't gotta be no girlfriend. They'll make you a wife. Okay. Yeah. So it went from just friend to fiance. It's girl. Like Feel it. Feel it. Tell us. Look at God. Look at God. Yeah, it's crazy. We've been knowing each other since we were kids. So we just kind of like always had like this distant friendship. Like we wasn't best friends. Like we would probably hit each other up on social media, slide up under things that he was posting. Um, So that was the crazy part. It's just like a random conversation that popped off. And then we ended up hanging out together. And then it's like when we hung out, it was like, oh, yeah, like an instant immediate connection that just like on all fronts from life to the way that we viewed marriage. And so that's how it just went from there because we never actually was just, I think that we just knew like from the first day, it was like, I don't want to spend a day apart from you. Like these feelings that I have, they're very real. They're progressing very quickly. And um, yeah, we probably was boyfriend and girlfriend after like, I don't even want to say that. That's what, am I delusional? After Girl. the first day, I was your friend. You need to stop. So yeah, that. and then we were engaged a few months later. So it was, that was crazy. I love it. Um, What has the journey been like for you preparing to be somebody's whole wife? I was already a wife, girl. Yes, Corinne. She's I was wife. already a wife. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was just waiting to be found. But no, it's a journey. I'm not going to lie. This is a piece of work. And I think that like relationships in general are hard. Whenever you think about marriage, it's just different from just like being boyfriend and girlfriend. Because if you piss me off, I could just go. <laughs> like marriage is different from that it's an actual commitment and I think like understanding it outside of the lines of just like oh my gosh I'm just so in love with you is so important like it's partnership it's ministry so I feel like for us like it's why we like even in this scope because we were supposed to get married like literally in May but like for us to just be like mature enough to be like you know what nope like let's take the necessary time to make sure that we're fully prepared for this commitment is such a beautiful thing and I'm um, just being able to do that with a person and the things that you only learn with a person that'll bring certain things out of you because because mm -hmm. some people you sometimes you understand yeah. what so yeah I don't know it's it's a beautiful thing it's a learning curve for sure but it's life and it just like reminds you like oh yeah this is really important for people that don't believe I guess like in marriage it's like the things that you see just from like the conversations and the healing and dealing with the trauma and like it's like oh yeah um, marriage our preparation for marriage would have been the only thing that brought this out of me you know so it's it's beautiful and it's hard and it's scary at times but it's God's purpose and his plan for our lives so right and that's what life is all of those things so. all of those you girl yes so okay. yeah okay so where's our invite have y'all set a date we haven't and you know what i'm i'm not trying to plan no wedding i'm let me tell you nobody told me mm. nobody told me that the planning was going to be this intense girl it's intense. that he wasn't going to he was going to sit back and agree to everything he wasn't going to have any real input that it was all going to be on me so when we do decide that the time is right i don't even think that we're going to have a big wedding like I'm like elope vibes, courthouse. I'm sad at that. Listen, yeah. <laughs> let's get elope. <laughs> elope and just do y'all. Like celebrate the two of y'all, okay? You like, know what I'm saying? And then maybe like a little party. So I'll invite you to a party, party with the family and friends, obviously. But listen, yeah. girl, all that extra stuff. I, I don't know. It's just it's. Uh, uh, I'm busy. Look, booked and busy. Which I'm about <laughs> to get into something else really quickly. But have you found your dress yet? I have. Oh, 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 okay. I have it. Because I'm excited about it. I, it really has to be constructed. Like I I ordered it because I saw this dress. I'm a very exact type of girl. Like whenever I see inspiration, most of the time I'm gonna be like, I want it to look exactly like that. 
So I was going to have my designer to make it, but he knows how I am. So he found the, like the actual originator who made this particular dress. They made it custom and now he has to take it and he's going to customize it for me. So I do have, Mm. I don't know what I'm going to get though, girl. I don't know when I'm going to get in it, but I got it. (laughs) But you got it. Long as you got it, that's all that matters. Okay. Well, I can't wait to see it when I'm at the wedding. We can't wait. Period. Listen, okay, because we're going to be there celebrating you. Or the party. But the celebration, the after celebration. You know, we're going to see. You never know. But right now, just a party. But you never know. Listen, nothing wrong with that. I'm telling you. Been married for 12 years. And girl, listen. So you know the vibes. You know what I'm talking about. I definitely, I can relate. I can relate. Corinne, with everything you have going on, like the wedding, the, just the music, the acting, how do you find time to prioritize like your mental health and like balance everything so that you aren't like on empty? You know what? Um, I think having a strong support system is really essential to that. Cause a lot of times I can feel really alone, like, or like people don't understand. So I think that like, surrounding myself even like because I'm kind of a loner but Mm -hmm. allowing you know that space to have people to come and like love on you is like really important I have like I don't have a lot of friends but I do have like a few friends that are like always reaching out and I thank them for that because I I'm the type of person like I'm the type of friend that we might not talk all the time but they know that I love them and that I'm loyal to them if they ever need anything I'm there and for them to not take it personal and to still like reach out and like hey I love you and I'm praying for you I love them down. All of my friends, I love y'all down. Chantel, I love you down. You know what I'm saying? I got real friends that are that are like that. They've been there for years and they don't take those things personal. So I think like allowing myself to receive that love, to receive that support and obviously maintaining the most important relationship, which is with the Lord, you know, staying keen and making sure that I'm doing like my personal time with him, my prayer time to keep me sane and make sure I'm on the right track because this life can drive you crazy, babe. Especially if you don't know what you're in it for. You just out here roaming. You don't got no type of purpose, no direction from God. You just doing it on your own. So making sure I balance that part out. And then my little dogs, girl, my, I love my little dogs. Sure, they love their mama too. I got no kids. Those are my kids. They love their mama. They love their baby. Because why do I have that big dog? You why? talking about baby. You talking about little baby. They, that dog taller than me. Walk up <laughs> I was like, you Listen. thought it was about to be a little. Uh-uh. She's a monster. I was like, hey, how you doing? I'm like. <laughs> hey <there. laughs> I love that, Corinne. I love that. Um, how now I mentioned earlier, like again, I said this all throughout this interview. You're booked and busy, preparing for a wedding, promoting your new project, being nominated for two stellar awards coming up. Let's not forget that. Um, but you're also set to go out on tour, the girls' night out tour. Listen, I'm ready to get my tickets. Talk to Girl. us about that project, that tour. I can't wait for that. I'm super excited for it to be like just an all girls situation. And let me make this clear. Men, y'all can come to the tour too, because it's like, they be forgetting, like we're saying that it's an all girl ensemble, you know, but men, y'all could come out too. come to the girls night out tour. Naomi, Kiera, Wande, all women that I have incredible relationships with outside of like the industry and outside of this tour. Like I've had the best conversations with Naomi just about like my personal life and things that she's been through. She's an encouraging, like just a woman in my life. I love her. And Kiera is like one of the first people that I met, even when I was starting my career to like give me great advice. Me and Wande met each other a few years back and we are always like kiki and on social. So I think it was just like a match made in heaven because we all genuinely have really close, tight-knit relationships. And I'm super excited about it. This is for the girls. You know what I'm saying? We're not excluding the guys, but this is definitely for the girls. And we're going to have the best time. We're going to be able to worship. And y'all know I'm bringing y'all the vibes, babe. The heat. Oh, we y'all, know Korean baby is bringing the heat, honey. Y'all know I'm bringing that heat. We're going to give a chill. It's going to be a time. We're going to have some talks. So... I'm excited. What should people be wearing to the tour? Is he giving Renaissance meets what? You know what's crazy is that people are in the comments asking and we never solidified if it was like we're supposed to be in we haven't talked, the girls haven't talked about it. So I'm going to them in a group chat and ask them for clarity. Y'all, are we covered? 
Are we coloring? Look at the information, like, you know, showing up right. In silver. Is that what we're doing for the tour? Like, if that's the case, we need to give an official, and I need to start getting my outfits together. Listen. I'm going to ask them. You be fly, honey. You be looking super cute, okay? <laughs> so, I think pink would be cute because that's in y'all's promo. It is. I'm going to ask them, girl. We just said, I was like, I don't think we did this on purpose. I think the girls are rallying up their pink outfits. We Metallic pink. To and me. imagine us showing up with, with purple. Black. And the men just like, okay, I'm coming. Hey, we what you wear. Just come on. <laughs> Corinne, I saw an old video video of you uh, singing. You were young. You were on stage, and you were commanding the stage. You had to be seven. I don't know. You were little, but you had stage presence. You had vocal control. You were just, like, commanding the room. How do you prepare for, like, the tour coming up? How do you prepare for, like, live performances and performing on a big stage? You know what? I'm going to start um with my vocal coach really soon just to get my little vocal warm-ups because I do not want to lose my voice this tour. I want to be able to give it all I got at every show. I'm going to be going to meet with my choreographer to see if we want to do like just what the vibes are. Like what are the vibes? Are we giving like a show or are we going to just give them the songs and vibe? Um, So that's really the preparation just depending on how big of a scale I'm going to do the performances. And that's really how I prepare other than that it's like I'm really excited because I feel like I just have like family and supporters across the states and I get to see oh, them now. across the world you have fans and supporters all over the world yes. so I'm excited to see them like that's my my biggest thing is that like we get to connect through social media but being able to be in a room with people who like may have been supporting me since like the voice there are people that have really been there for a while and this is going to be their first time seeing me like on tour for some people so i'm i'm really excited about that we can't wait what's your favorite song to perform live uh you know what so far it's been look at god mm -hmm. um so far i've been look at god has been like my recent favorite but i think that like won't he do it is like a classic because like that's one that is like it's always lit people know it from top to bottom like i don't even be having to sing won't he do it like on tour, I'm probably just gonna ain't no. To the crack, like, I don't, do I don't have to. Do anything else. So those two I, lately has been look at God because it's new and I get super surprised by like how many people actually know the song. But I mm -hmm. think like won't he do it? Is it's that one? Won't he do it? Listen, won't he? Listen, I feel like he's. It's nothing that God won't do, and that's what I also like about look at God because it's like he's shown us the receipts over and over and over again, and we still sometimes doubt like okay god where are you are you hearing me and it's like yeah he hears us because look at him he shows up right on time so yeah I love, I love that corinne and all that you have accomplished because you've done so much what are you most proud of i think i'm proud of um i don't know like the person that I am like the fact that I got to maintain like my heart mm -hmm. um the purity of like why I do what I do I feel like I've seen it ruin a lot of people um so I think I'm just really proud that God was able to like preserve like my heart and my intention behind the reason why I do the things that I do um I think that like my biggest compliment that people give me is like you're so down to earth like you're like my home girl like and I think that that's just like wow like because I really don't think about it and I know that like I've seen I've met some people that are not like that you know so I think that's probably one of the I'm proud of that and I'm proud that I'm able to do what God is calling me to do I could have been doing anything girl anything. but I'm following the path hopefully prayerfully he continues to keep me on this path that I'm fulfilling purpose. I'm proud of that. You fulfill we proud of you. I ain't got no kids. You know, like <laughs> they ain't got no kids. You got two big, you got the dog children over there creating that don't Girl, play. I got a lot. I got a lot of now nah, listen. <laughs> I got, listen. Girl. Proud. I could have been a baby mama. Ain't nothing wrong with the baby mamas though. Shout out to y'all. Cause my mama, baby mama. Baby mama be holding it down. But for me to be doing everything that I'm doing on top of that, I know that that might have broke me down. 
that would have broke me down. So I'm just grateful for, for just the things that I've accomplished, like in my life and being able to like, you know, just stay strong throughout the storms. Cause I've definitely had my own tests and trials and tribulations and yeah, I'm proud. Mm. Well, that's that. And we're proud of you, ma'am. Keep Thank on. You. Listen, keep on inspiring, Corinne. You're so young, but I just feel like, girl, you're so, it's some, you you have an anointing on you for sure. You definitely you. are in your purpose. It's, you can see it, it's all over you. And please continue to use your gifts because it's helping so many other people out in the world. So thank you for that. Thank you so much. Thank We're you. We're so proud of you. We love you. We support you. And baby, everybody, if they don't already have it, which I'm sure they do, your new album on God is streaming now everywhere. And it's available. I go, get that. Go, get that. go get that. Go cop it. Where are y'all waiting on? But I'm sure they already have it. Corinne, thank you so much. Thank you, babe. I really appreciate it so much. This was so good. I appreciate you taking the time. I can't wait to come see you on tour. And yes, the way honey. I can't wait. Please let me know what city you coming to, girl, so mm -hmm. that I can see you in real life.